um, it's still okay. I'll start again. Welcome everybody. Um, it's always great to see people joining in. And um, I was saying that there is some rule about um, two minutes uh, past the session that we should kick start. And, and I don't know where that comes from, but let's get started and um, other attendees will uh, join, we'll, we'll um, let them in. So very excited for our today's session. Um, and it's just four weeks. It's extremely surreal that in four weeks we've had so much um, uh, response in this area. Um, we started, of course, with the most important topic on how to um, talk about money, how to kick off the conversations. We followed with the psychology of money. Um, and then we continued with um, what are some rules of thumb around managing our own personal finance. And with that um, uh, trajectory in mind, today we have again um, Anu Seth um, from Paid Forward, who is going to be talking about um, two very important topics um, called inflation and compounding, which are extremely important around personal uh, management of finance that we have to keep in mind a rupee today. What's the value of that rupee tomorrow? And before I hand over to Anu, um, I also want to say that Paid Forward is a social enterprise and they take huge, huge pride in um, you know, uh, doing financial literacy, which is simplified, plain English. And of course, if there are some acronyms that we all need to know, they also ensure that, you know, people who take their trainings understand um, those terms really well. Um, we will kick off the session with a few icebreakers, which with their will lead and a poll question. And then we will hand over to um, Anu to kick off the session. Thank you. Over to you, Vidya. Thank you, Simran. A very, very, very happy evening to all of you. It's it's great to see all of you here. So quickly, let's let's get on to the icebreaker question. Question number one: What is something positive you learned about money and finances from your parents? Please type in your answers in the chat box. I'm going to type this question as well, just in case if you guys need it. Yes. Here you go. What is something that you learned about money and finances from your parents? Bring it in, people. Save for future. To spend money wisely. Savings. Savings. Invest. Don't spend too much on clothes. Ah, save. Save enough to spend money wisely and help others. Savings today are less in the future, so invest. Nothing, uh, noting down credits and expenses every single day and marking down to a rupee. Okay. Save and invest. Spending all at one will stop the growth. Invest in right manner to grow. Great. Avoid unnecessary expenditures. Any more answers coming in? Bring it in, people. Okay, so let me go on to the next question. Uh, all the answers are interesting. Uh, so we are going to uh, you know, listen from Anu more about whatever you have just typed in. So let me go on to the next question. What are, the, what are some ways your beliefs about money have changed over the years? I repeat the question. What are some ways your beliefs about money have changed over the years? Okay, I'm going to type this question in the chat box for all of you. Yes, here you go. Investment is better than saving, okay. Money is not limited. I thought only rich people could invest. Okay. That's 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 really a nice answer. Should I have emergency fund. Okay. Bring it in, people. Any, any more answers? Value of money decreases with years. Okay. Start investing at the earliest. Money in fixed deposit is not the only way. Great. 
lack of financial knowledge will make us poor. I agree. Any more answers? So I guess, uh, Anu, you've got a uh, variety of answers. I think this session is going to be very, very interesting for everyone. So before we jump in, I request uh, Sanjana to launch the first poll. So Sanjana, you can launch the first poll and then over to you. I read out the poll questions. Do you think inflation has a direct or indirect effect on the value of your savings or your earning power? Great. So we see uh, more people opting for the first option. Yes, I think inflation can cause my savings to be insufficient. Yes. Sanjana, we'll wait for 10 more seconds and then you can end the poll. People, those of you who want to give in more answers, please do it. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjana. Anu, over to you. Looking forward to listening to you today. Thank you. Thank you, Simran. Thanks, Vidya. Happy evening to all of you and welcome in. Uh, can we just close the poll question? I, I can do it here. Yeah. So that's a great start, actually, Vidya, with a lot of very interesting comments coming in, right from noting down credit card expenses to not spending too much on clothes. I remember my mom saying the same thing to me. Um, so I think um, the audience is like really ready for the next concept. Uh, maybe I'm just wondering if I should have done a more advanced uh, discussion. But uh, very often you'll find there will be little gaps in our understanding. So let's why don't we get started right from the beginning and try and bridge our gap on the two topics today. And these are the topics. Um, no points for guessing. We are talking about inflation and compounding. What you can observe here is that the two pictures look very similar. Um, and um, uh, they're actually two sides of the same story. Um, I, I'm just getting distracted with a very interesting comment here. Money is just a digital number. Um, yes, Akita, I strongly believe that money is a digital number, but it's also a very strong resource. And just like we have to learn how to channelize our energy and use our body or use our intelligence. We need to also develop a money skill. And um, uh, when you use the money skill in the right manner, money can make uh, uh, money can make money work and produce more money. And then you can see the digital number grow in a beautiful way. So jumping right away into the first uh, first segment, which is inflation, I want to um, bring to your notice a few questions. So please use the chat box to uh, give me your answers. Let's say you need to uh, meet a friend for coffee. Where would you go? You can unmute yourself or you can type in the chat box, whatever is comfortable. Yeah, Starbucks seems to be the choice. Choice. I've I've been doing this as a latest activity. I'm getting to hear Starbucks very frequently. Clearly, the brand is catching up with us, right? Where would you go if you had to watch a movie? Maybe a boy. Yes. Where would you go for a medical checkup? 
you're getting a bit serious now. Where would you go for a medical checkup? PVR, any multiplex, to a family doctor, to a hospital nearby, a nearby doctor, a family doctor, a doctor who knows his job, no medical checkup until I'm ill. Okay, Akita, that's an interesting one. What about, where would you go? What, what let's say you had to buy shoes for, a, for walking, what, which shoes would you buy? Adidas, Nike, okay, a brand like Bata. Pavni, I love you. Puma, Decathlon, yeah. Durable yet fashionable. Yes, that's an interesting one. Buy during a sale. Of course, we have the uh, Amazon sale, which is you just end up buying so many things, things that you need as well as things that you don't need. And we'll talk little further on uh, some of these. Yeah, Skechers, Nike, Adidas, uh, Puma, and buy during the sale, durable. Yeah, I can see both characters and brands coming in, but our parents do prefer Bata. Some street side place, which has a reasonable price. Walking shoes, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, very interesting set of ideas you guys have given me. And you can see that most of us were thinking of brands when we did this exercise. And uh, so we'll stop, we'll move on to the subject of inflation on how all this can impact us and how it can impact our finances as well. So first and foremost, I mean, I think all of us know that uh, prices do increase over a long period of time. And um, this can happen when demand of goods exceeds its capacity or when production costs go up. Also, when we have a rise in salaries to keep up with higher living cost, uh, uh, inflation works in our favor. Um, this also means that it, it erodes our purchasing power that whatever we could buy with let's say a 10,000 today, we'll, uh, we will be able to buy lesser goods with the same 10,000. And we see our needs and our choices also changing over a period of time. Like, you know, earlier when I was a kid, we would uh, just go to Bata, but now when it comes to shoes, yeah. We have so many more options, whether it is Skechers, Nike, Adidas, Puma, or even Decathlon, or a street side place as well. And online shopping has made it all so much easier for all of us. At the same time, when we think about money, you know, very often this is uh, this is what uh, this has been my observation um, in the last seven years of financial planning that people uh, think about inflation. We all know that there is inflation. But we do not account for it sufficiently, especially when we are thinking of goals like uh, planning for our future, whether it is child's education or planning for our own retirement or any uh, slightly goals which are slightly long term in nature. So how does this really work out? I wanted to throw another a slightly more mathematical question for you to understand the impact it can have over a long period of time. So let's say you your monthly expense is about 30,000 rupees a month. And the inflation is going to be 7%. That's what the headline numbers, at least on the newspaper say. How much do you think this expense is going to increase in 10 years, 20 years, or 30 years? I'll give you 30 seconds to work out the answer. And please use the chat box or unmute yourself and uh, we'll see what are the guesses you have. You could do a guess here. Any clue equation? Yes, that's a lovely one. Will they stay the same? So that is typically how uh, inflation will impact us. Some of these costs will definitely go up. The price of dal that was due 10 years ago is not the same, you know, they have gone up. In fact, the whole economies can change because of basic prices of basic necessities going up and down and they've been governments which come down if onion prices are too high. So um, this can happen. So coming to the answer, if you were to keep the status quo by not changing your lifestyle, not changing um, any of the consumption that you do and keeping it absolutely steady, this 30,000 just to buy goods for 
30K right now, 10 years later, you would be spending nearly double of this money and 20 years later, double of that and 30 years later, another double, uh, double of what you had in 20 years. So with this whooping number like 2.3, uh, which is 230,000, even though we understand there is inflation, unless we think about it mathematically, we often find that uh, one is underprepared uh, to take on such a large increase in the monetary value required for keeping the same thing. At the same time, some inflations are bound to happen. So for example, price of goods will definitely go up even if the percentages can vary. And right now price of goods is something like uh, food, et cetera, is going up at a rate of 7%. And we hope that our salaries are going to be in line with that. But think about things like travel inflation, right? So each of us, uh, all of us will have a different family structure and we get impacted by different kinds of inflation. So a single person will be impacted by something like a dating inflation. Yes, there is a number published like that. Or, uh, or let's say you're planning to get married, married, then there's something called a marriage inflation. Uh, and uh, you'd be surprised to know marriage inflation can be as high as 100%. Um, think about it, you know, we're no longer getting married in temples. There is a pre-wedding photo shoot. There is a special bachelorette that is happening. And there are so many other things. In fact, uh, my other colleague has just done a checklist on wedding expenses. So. Um, that was something I don't have on the chart here, but it's very interesting to observe how our lifestyles and our choices have been changing. At the same time, there will be some inflations, let's say like a household inflation, which is bound to happen. Um, like, you know, the salaries of your staff will go up, your consumption within like earlier, if you were going to a CCD, you'll probably be going to Starbucks, whether we're going out once once a month or we're going multiple times a month. These are kind of expenses which kind of seep in and this is called lifestyle inflation. It's a very creeping inflation that kind of impacts all of us. Uh, at the same time, some inflation like education and medical are not things which are in our hands. And those inflation, those inflationary pressures will obviously come on our money. So if you think about education, any guesses on what, what is the rise of Education fee. So education fee is going up by 15%. And if you think about higher education, then even the cost of uh, living will go up, right? For the child who's studying in a hostel or something. And in case we think of international education, we have to keep in mind the deviation between the rupee and dollar also. That's also going to be an impact. Yeah, education or uh, inflation is in the order of 10 to 15. And uh, so both kind of inflations impact us. The So you need to go and do a little bit of homework and figure out what are the pockets of inflation. So if it's somebody who doesn't have a child, they will not be impacted by education inflation. But if you, let's say, have two children, then education inflation will be one of the prime factors that, that will uh, impact your household budgets. So keep that in mind. And what about medical inflation? We are no longer going to government hospitals, right? We are all going to either the family doctor or trying to um, increasingly look after ourselves. Um, so any guesses on the medical inflation? Yeah, medical inflation is also in the range of 15 to 20%. And um, so let's, uh, I think I'll, Go to the next one. So I pulled up a chart on education inflation with costs rising about 10%. This was from Money Control very recently published. If you're thinking of sending your child to one of the um, best institutes or a private institutes right now, I think Ashoka is quoting at 30 lakhs. And if you plan for that and you've got a small young kid who's planning and you've got another 10, 12 years to work out their education costs, so the impact of inflation is going to be a very significant number that you'll have to think about. Look at the blue line, for example, a 30 lakh cost means that you've got to be prepared for about 78 lakhs uh, after 10 years. So we need to put these things in perspective and into our financial plan. Very often we buy financial products without keeping finan inflation in mind. 
So the right way of doing a financial plan is to first identify what kind of goal that you have. And in the next segment, we'll be doing this as a exercise when uh, like, you know, in my next session, I'm discussing goals. Um, so uh, you first work out what would be the future cost of goal and assessing inflation in the right manner is very important. I see a lot of Indians are great savers. We also get into investing and we think about FDs and uh, keeping our money in um, safe zones, but in, we do not account sufficiently for inflation. And um, this, is, this chart is just to highlight how education cost itself is going to go up. I'll, let's look at another question. Let's say a cost of, uh, cost of treatment today is about 10 lakhs. Uh, this would be like, you know, for example, India is a um, diabetes capital or cancer is growing in a big way. We saw COVID taking, um, disturbing everybody's financial plans and the expenses were really, really high. Can you guess what was the expense for one patient staying, uh, having COVID and needed hospitalization for about a week? the kind of expense that had to be incurred was in the order of a few lakhs. So think of a similar, and we had families come down with COVID. So um, think of a similar situation. And if this kind of cost, what will it be 10 years later? Akita, that's a wonderful guess. You've got it nearly right. But yeah, it would be about 40 lakhs 10 years later. And uh, in 20 years, it would be about 1.6 crores. So guys, I want to forewarn you that ensure that you have a very good health insurance because uh, in case there's a change of job as uh, or you know there is a break in your income stream because of whatever other reasons, health insurance is something each and all, every one of us uh, needs to think about, um, even though most of us will have life insurance in place. Um, in India, we find that um, uh, we are not sufficiently insured on the health insurance perspective. So th this is these are some medical costs which are like, you know, one has to be prepared for it. Only when you're prepared for these, you will be able to release extra money towards investment. And as we saw in our initial poll, you know, investment is the next is uh, equally important. It's not just about savings. Savings when converted into investment and uh, invested in the right manner can really uh, lead to a wonderful wealth generation uh, opportunity for all of you. And these are some of the ways I thought which was just to bring in a bit of humor on how one can deal with inflation, whether getting <laughs> up in a jail or finding the right uh, way like Calvin has found. Um, like all of us like to inherit wealth, right? So uh, maybe finding the right compounding method and that is the uh, next part that I want to speak to you about. I hope you understand the impact of inflation is going to be very significant and keep that in mind in your financial planning. So when we come to inflation, um, we've all done compound interest in school. If you go and open a seven standard uh, textbook, a uh, maths textbook of seventh or eighth standard, you will definitely find um, compound interest being discussed. And that's the formula taking you back to school days. And the biggest impact that you see is time. And as, um, as India has a young demographic, most of us have time on our side and that's our biggest resource. Um, it's, although, although many of us think that I don't have enough money to invest, I want you to think about time being a resource, but since you have enough time to invest and compounding works wonderfully when you give it the uh, give it a long time. In fact, none of us knew about Warren Buffett till he turned 74 or 75. He's been in news only in the last 10, 12 years. So most of his wealth has generated because of compounding, whereas he started investing at the age of 11, but we kind of know him only from the age of 74 or 75. And that is because he, his money has compounded to a whooping amount now. And uh, this is just an example to showcase this. Uh, let's say, you know, uh, you start investing in, um, invest just about 10,000 rupees per year and keep this money, uh, invest only for 10 years and keep this money away. 
and you start this investment journey at the age of 40 when you realize that now I need to start saving up for my future. By the time you hit retirement or actually uh, I've taken 65 because with even with an extended work, you tend to um, depend on your savings only by the age of 60 or 65. This amount would lead to a corpus of about eight lakhs. Had you started a little early, let's say 35, this amount would have become nearly 13 lakhs. So, and um, for some of you already st said starting earlier, can you guess how much this would be? Had you started as early as you started working, let's say at the age of 25 or 26? Any guesses if I start investing 10,000 rupees a year from the age of 25? And I invest only for 10 years. And let's say after 10 years, I get very busy with my life and I'm doing other things. What kind of impact that will have? Yes, you're right, Sri Lata and Akita, you all are very close. This would be something like a 34 lakhs. So you can see the impact of time is very significant. And uh, the other uh, point I wanted to make using this graph is that you've left your money in this compounding cycle for several years together. So it is very important that you stay with your investment for a long period of time and not jump in and jump out. Like, you know, all of us tend to get into this um, cliff spending whenever you see money coming in and your, um, pro your fund or your investment has done well, you tend to withdraw money from that. So let's look at the next example on how that can impact. So, I mean, we know that the new iPhone is coming. I see a lot of people already, a lot of interest trying to buy that. So um, similarly in India, we end up buying the iPhone unlike in the West where it's part of the lease uh, with your phone plan itself. Uh, so we, we end up buying the gadget here. So let's say you chance upon 10 lakhs and you find the right investment vehicle, which is in this case, um, a mutual fund where you've invested at a 12% CAGR and left the money to grow for um, a good, uh, for nearly 20, 30 years, which is like the time period of your working life. Um, and had you left that money, it would have translated to a whooping cor corpus of about 3.7 crores. And let's say one year down the line, the iPhone comes in and we find our money doing well or our mutual fund performing well, the, the psychology is such that we tend to withdraw from that. And just withdrawing that one, one and a half lakh over a long period of time has an impact of about 48 lakhs. And on you go about with your business and you find your fund is doing really well. And five years later, you withdraw some money to go on a holiday. So with the holiday and a phone, the impact is somewhere about over a crore. And this kind of impact, this is how we kind of lose the opportunity of creating wealth because we earmark money to do, to compound and we lose patience along the way. And we tend to withdraw money from uh, whatever our compounding cycle is. Either when the, when the product is not performing well, I see many people withdraw. Even when the product is performing well, like in this example, we tend to withdraw money just for cliff spending. So the idea is to correct and tweak our behavior such that once we have earmarked the funds for, for a particular um, segment or a particular time period, we do not withdraw from that. Now, this requires us to keep three things in mind. One is that our product selection has been done in the right manner. Two is we have defined why we need this money and we are motivated enough to kind of keep the money for that duration, which means the goal has to be very clear. So, and the third thing is that we've chosen, an, uh, chosen a rate of interest, which is going to be inflation beating. In case we don't do an inflation beating, uh, uh, beating outcome, we might as well spend our money now. So in India, especially, you know, we are, uh, we are great savers. And the saving rate is somewhere like 34%. But most of our money is held in savings or in an FD. So I wanted to bring in the rate of interest and the risk associated with it uh, to, to your notice. So if you see, the red line is what 
if you had kept money in an FD for 15 years, that is how that is the outcome of one lakh. It would have become two lakh fifty seven if you'd kept it in um, in just a bank deposit. At the same time, if you think about inflation and how inflation would be eating into your returns, in this example, I've taken inflation at only 6%, which is the blue bar, and the red line across cuts off the inflation returns. And you will observe that your bank deposits are just barely keeping in line. And remember what we discussed earlier, that inflation is a much bigger number for uh, urban Indians. And, uh, uh, and that can have a more significant impact. And it's not going to be 6% depending on your family structure. So it's very important that you know what your family's inflation is. And keeping that in mind, if you, if you look at the red bar, you've barely managed to cross it. Whereas when you come towards the green bars, of course, this is, uh, this is an equity mutual fund and we are assuming it's been performing well over a long period of time. Um, 50 years, we see that the outcome is definitely beating inflation. Now, if we are looking at an inflation beating return and, uh, and we are looking at products like equity mutual funds or a direct uh, investment into equity, we need to keep risk in mind. And the, there is a trade-off between a risk of not investing because inflation is going to eat out your money. And the on the other hand, you have uh, in inflation beating in investment where you need to learn how to manage the risk. So instead of putting all your money in any one of these baskets, one needs to design a portfolio which has a mix of all of this because you get a stability of return which is coming from the fixed deposit and you get a, a inflation beating return which is coming from a mutual fund. The other point to notice here is that this money has been kept for a long period of time, which means that when you come towards equity, you can beat inflation only when you think of a long period of time. Um, now, think of the other angle uh, that most of us, um, keeping these two principles in mind, when you think about how we generally invest, most of you would have done your first investment to save tax. Do you agree? How many of you have done your first investments to save tax? Yeah. And what is the general investment we, we have done? Some LIC uncle? Yes, insurance is coming up. All of us have an LIC uncle who's probably um, a friend of the family or a neighbor or somebody who's uh, bringing in this. Um, and uh, yeah, it's okay. If you did not reach there, then you are at the right space to start right or an LIC or an NSC, yes. So I think tax saving is a big, big Indian uh, to-do kind of thing. We all embark the journey of investment when we come into the, I mean, come into the workforce and start investing for tax. I'm seeing this trend change with more and more younger people looking at other aspects as well. So I wanted to bring into perspective how you could use compounding just by just by managing your tax better. And um, uh, if you look at, um, I have the next example for you. So I've looked at four products which are tax saving. Let's say you, and when we talk about tax saving, we also talk about a time duration. For example, some examples of PPF, which are coming in, uh, coming here in the chat box, Sri Lata and Divya, both of you have invested there. PPF, we lock in our money for 15 years. And um, after 15 years also, we are okay with doing an extension. And we, we assume that this is a government, uh, because it's a government-backed scheme, we assume that there is an assurity of return. Now, we do not think about inflation when it comes to that. So because I'm thinking about inflation and compounding, I want you to use this calculator to work out how the money would grow. The other instrument I have here in case three is an equity-linked saving scheme which is um, basically um, given by a mutual fund. So these are specific mutual funds which uh, you can invest in and benefit from, a, uh, from uh, using the contribution towards ELSS um, is also eligible under your tax uh, exemption bracket of ATC. Uh, however, it is a equity uh, product and invests into the market. Now, endowment policy is the LIC kind of policy framework, you either get an endowment policy term policy or a ULIP. 
And most of us go wrong by buying an endowment policy, which, which gives a very, very substandard of three to 4% kind of return. So if you, uh, if you just use this and I have the results with me, just by using your tax saving correctly, you can actually change your uh, outcome just by defining which instrument you have used to save your tax. Because uh, whenever we are thinking of tax, we are willing to save for the long term. This is a similar thing we need to consider when we uh, think about the SIP. So here on an FD, I've taken a 5%. So even when we think about an SIP, you know, we very often miss out on early compounding cycles or the compounding opportunity because we start paying all our savings as interest instead of putting our savings into a inflation beating return and allowing the money, the initial part of compounding, which is very slow, we allowing our money to be in a compounding cycle, which can give us uh, an inflation beating return in future. So um, if you just see, you know, there is an opportunity within the tax window to benefit from better compounding by improving on your uh, tax, uh, improving on your compounding rate itself. This can be applied very, very beautifully in an example when you're thinking of planning for either your retirement or planning for the long term. Typically in India, we are uh, three products that I commonly see people using are LIC policies uh, and PPF. And I we did this study, uh, Value Research published this study on ELSS, uh, where if you were to keep your money in ELSS for the same duration as you keep it in a PPF, the outcome can change from a 74 lakhs to two crores. If you keep this for 35 years of your work life, this two crores jumps up to being a four crore, which gives you a completely different outcome on your wealth creation journey. Um, the rule is that you stay invested with it and you find the right saving investment, uh, saving instrument. So yeah, I'll be happy to take questions on this in case there are any, but um, this is these are the two thoughts that I wanted to leave you with significantly how inflation needs to be kept in mind when you're thinking of any goal. So saving does not make you wealthy, investing does. And you need to learn to manage risk to beat inflation. So that should be part of your education plan. You can improve your savings by creating a solid budget. There is a rule which says 50, 30 and 20. If you budget properly, then those, even the small savings can be directed towards the right investment. You can avoid cliff spending and be more careful about how you are allowing lifestyle inflation to come into, um, into your life. Don't allow it to creep in. Uh, to improve compounding, remember time is your best resource. Use it to your best, uh, to, to your best and you, you should start investing as early as possible. Try and do a goal-based planning so that you have a direction to your money. And um, uh, it will also build motivation for you to stay invested for the course of the period. Remember, compounding works on the long term. So you, in case there are short-term needs, you can allocate money separately and allocate money separately for long-term needs. Choose an inflation-beating investment and save your tax wisely. Any questions out here? Okay, then I'd leave you with three things. I think these are three resources you can use. Um, there's a book uh, by Monica Halan, Let's Talk Money, and she writes in a very, very simple language, and it's very pertinent to the Indian investing market. Um, walks you through the various uh, various investment uh, methods you have and investment, uh, whether it is um, the various investment products or how to do create a portfolio and create a portfolio allocation. You, you can subscribe to Value Research. I really like their readings. They, are, um, they write very, very uh, relevant blogs. ET Money is a great YouTube channel to um, deep dive into any of these subjects in a more detailed manner.
what is compound, uh, where do common salaried people learn on investing as most people only know of FTs? Yes, um, I think there are, uh, Moloma, uh, thanks for your question. That's a very interesting one. Um, so most of us are already aware of FDs. Also, we learn this through our parents and the whole uh, financial scenario and the whole investing market has changed significantly from our previous generation. And we realize that uh, there is no structured method to teach financial planning or, finan uh, or investments per se. And uh, She Knows Money is one of the initiatives to spread financial literacy and financial awareness. Uh, most people in India invest in FD because we think about it as being safe and government backed, and we are scared of adding anything as risk. Um, however, I even at the cost of repeating, I'd like to say that inflation is a big risk when you keep your money in uh, in an FD, and the early years should be used in the right way by starting your SIPs on time and ensuring that you have some exposure towards the equity markets through, um, if you don't have the time to do it yourself, you can do it through mutual funds. It's a very, very professionally backed uh, segment. So just like you go to a doctor in case you're unwell, where do you go to manage money? You should go to a professional. So mutual funds is a, um, is a product set which is available for this. You can buy it through various methods. I'm not selling any. So, um, so it's important that you uh, keep some of your investment in an inflation beating return as well. So um, uh, Divya, what is compounding? So compounding is basically earning interest on interest. So let's say you park 100 rupees for uh, as an investment at 10%. Then at the end of the year, you get 10 rupees. Now in that 10 rupees, you have two choices, whether you will take the 10 rupees and go and uh, eat an ice cream, or you will add that as your principal and allow that to be further invested. So basically, um, so in the next year, not just your 100 rupees will earn, uh, earn interest, the, the extra 10 that you have added also will earn interest. So getting interest on the interest uh, money that you earned the previous uh, segment is called compound interest. And compounding, it can be popularly found. Think about your dosa batter or think about, uh, think about trees. Um, think about setting curd. One moment it is not set and the other moment it just blooms. So that is how compounding works. It's getting interest on interest. Coming. Yeah, between debt funds and mutual funds, which is the better on a long term? So it is very important, Srilata, that's a nice question. So when you think about uh, debt fund is a kind of a mutual fund. So under the mutual fund, you get all the various asset classes that I'd spoken about, be it be it uh, a money market, so be it cash, be it debt, be it equity, be it real estate, all of these can be bought in the in the financial market itself. And debt fund is kind of a mutual fund which invests in a fixed income or an FD kind of product. Um, and equity mutual fund is a kind of a uh, mutual fund which will invest into shares or stocks of various companies. Both of these can be, you can invest in either of them, but from an inflation point of view, um, investing in an equity mutual fund can give you a inflation beating return in the long term. How do you manage money if we are a freelance and money is not the same every month? Yeah, this is a very, uh, very important and a very interesting, uh, 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 interesting question, question, Akita. So for freelancers, the challenge is um, how do they create a regular investment? So there are two things. One, first and foremost, you have to you have to uh, mark out your uh, uh, mark out money for your emergency fund, and I think this is something all of us need to do. Ensure that you have an emergency fund, which is, uh, which is. Uh, uh, I think there is already a section which has been done. So emergency fund should be for about three to six months of your expenses. And this, this is the money that should just be readily available to you and parked in a simple product like an FD or a liquid fund. And this is this will not earn you any interest. So when once you have money for six months always available with you, then you get into the investment for the long term and invest into the equity market and when you get to the equity market, remember that your money should be 
um, you should have this money available for five to seven years. You should not be looking at a short term for equity because equity markets are extremely volatile. And uh, the only way to reduce the volatility is to increase your time. So you don't reduce the volatility of the market. You reduce the volatility of your return by increasing the tenure. And uh, you earmark, uh, so once you've earmarked your emergency fund, then the next step is that you do a goal-based planning. And for your long-term goals, you should you can look at equity mutual funds. Um, and even when there is uh, not significant cash flow, so let me uh, qualify this with an example. Let's say your cash flow is such that one, one month you're going to earn 2,000, the other month you're going to earn 4,000, the third month it could be 3,000. So we allocate the lowest minimum possible every month as the money that you can put into a surplus. The balance, you keep it, uh, in the savings account. And once you have a quantum lump sum, then you transfer it into a mutual, a mutual fund or whichever uh, product that you have chosen. Does that help you, Akita? Otherwise, I'll be happy to do a call with you separately on that. There's another one. I think every person has to be customized. Yes, a, a financial plan is a very highly customized uh, outcome. Basically, uh, we call it a personal financial plan, right? It has to be very personal. It keeps in mind uh, factors like the number of dependents you have, your cash streams like Akita, uh, in your case, if you're thinking of freelancing, then uh, the emergency fund becomes a very important part of your financial planning. The second step being what is the insurance that you have because you want to be covered from all uncertainties before you can embark the journey of uh, any kind of um, investment. The third part is the health insurance. So everybody needs a health insurance. Even when you have health insurance from your organization, you should take your own health insurance because whenever there is a job change or in any, any uncertain time, you can't depend on the company's health insurance. Also, those amounts are not significant enough to cover for any kind of uncertainty. So the first step is to cover yourself for any uncertainty. It's like laying the foundation for a building. And then you move on to the investment journey. Is health insurance a must given the high premiums if one saves that amount? Um, so um, health insurance, uh, I don't think that one should compromise on health insurance. Um, even though the premium is high, it is a safety belt. It is, it's like trying to drive without a seat belt, right? So that's the first step that one needs to do, um, ensure that you have it. So how about an LIC policy? What are the risks? So it depends on the LIC policy. If you have an endowment, uh, uh, if you are talking about a, a life insurance policy, then each and everyone, whoever is earning an income should have a term policy. But however, LIC sells, sells us all kinds of products. So the, the products are uh, very often endowment policies and um, they are products which mix investment and insurance. So when you mix investment and insurance, the division becomes a little unclear. And uh, as a buyer of this kind, as a consumer of a mixed product, we tend to look at returns. Whereas when, when you look at insurance, you should be happy paying the insurance and not looking at returns. Uh, whenever you mix the two, the premiums just jump up. So I'll give you an example. If you're looking at a term insurance policy for let's say one crore for a, 20, uh, for a 25 to 30 year old, you will be paying anywhere about 10,000 rupees as a premium. It's like buying a car insurance that every year I've got to pay this, but it's not coming back to me. Uh, whereas if I look at a mixed product like a money back or a, a money back policy or an endowment policy, the same premium will be in the in about 30,000. So obviously when you're paying 30,000 for that insurance, you want some return, right? If you do the same thing through a ULIP, you'll be paying a premium of one lakh. So you block your money in a non-transparent uh, uh, product which has a lot of hidden features and hidden charges and thereby you compromise um, by uh, buying a substandard product, so to say, and uh, which does not beat inflation and is quite complex in nature. 
And these are all long gestation products. So it's very difficult for us to kind of uh, stop paying them or cancel those policies. That becomes extremely difficult. And this leads to a lot of uh, opportunity cost and wealth erosion. Thanks, Owen. Those are some very interesting questions. Yeah, the questions were yeah. amazing. Yeah. So do we have any more questions? Otherwise, we would like to launch the next poll. Sanjana, can you launch the next poll, please? Wait, so nice. I think it's a very uh, mixed so far. I'm seeing more people inclined to investing early to ensure inflation yes. is in return. My only word of caution is please understand the product that you're buying and um, invest only after understanding. It's all right to take a month or two months, sometimes even a year to figure out what is right. Um, it would give you a better outcome than entering, having a loss, than like, you know, um, trying to re-enter. Work out your lifestyle inflation. That's a very, very important one. And you won't realize how slowly it just creeps in. And some of the questions were, that I asked you in the beginning were just to like, you know, trigger your thinking there. Find the future cost of your goal, yes. What about the second one? Shall we end the poll? Yes, we can end. Thank you so much, Anu. That was a wonderful session as always and a lot of, you know, insightful information. And I, I the, the, the questions, uh, you know, showed yeah. it all. So people were really curious to know more about it. And I'm going to share... Uh, Anu's LinkedIn profile. So people who want to connect with her, please do connect with her in LinkedIn. I put it in the chat window. And thank you all for the for spending your time with us today. And uh, please do refer your friends to be part of Aspire for Her community. We have more and more interesting sessions lined up for all of you. And I'm sharing the Aspire for Her link also here. So please do circulate it to your uh, you know friends and family and uh, do follow she knows money uh, social media handles and we are going to have some very very interesting sessions uh, coming up and the next session is lined up on the 9th of december same time six to seven on money management we are going to talk about the thumb rules on money management by neha from womenista so see you all there on the 9th December as well. Have a great evening. Thank you, Vidya. Thank you, Simran. Thank you, Aspire, for her, for the wonderful opportunity to share my thoughts. Um, I look forward to the next one. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Anu. You were great as always. Thanks, Sri Lata. Now you have to rework your inflation factor. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> It changes. So I'm glad that you took a 15%. That's that's a very liberal number. So I'm glad you taken a big number there. <laughs> All the best. Do shoot in an email in case you have any queries.